This is the Financially Simple Podcast, the show dedicated to destroying the complexities of money for today's small business owner. The content in the show is for informational purposes only. This show is not investment advice. Instead, seek help from a competent financial advisor or conduct your own due diligence. Justin Goodbread, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Heritage Investors, a registered investment advisor only conducting business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. Registration is not an endorsement of the firm by securities regulators and does not mean the advisor has achieved a specific level of skill or ability. Here's your host, pizza-loving, certified financial planner, Justin Goodbread. And welcome back to the Financially Simple Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Goodbrand. and today I'm excited to tell you that we are done with risk management. Yeah, I know. You probably had as much as you can handle on insurances and legal documents. As you know, if you listen to this season of the uh, podcast, what we're dealing with now is personal finances. For us business owners, I'm happy to tell you that now we have reached the sexy part of personal finances. What do you mean, Justin? Well, so many people want to talk about stocks and bonds. We're going to talk about that. It's finally time. What I want to cover today is an investment overview for business owners. Now, I got to tell you, I am excited to talk to you about investments, but I'm also kind of hesitant. Let me explain. I'm going to get on a little soapbox here for a second, but let me explain something. So many people, when they contact our office, they say, man, Justin, I need you to manage some money for us. And there's nothing wrong with that. Our team does a great job at managing money for folks. Other people, they'll say, what do you do for a living? I'll say, I'm a business advisor. I'm a wealth management person. Oh, yeah, whenever I get some money, I'll come back to you. (laughs) What a wrong way to look at the world I operate in. But it's a true statement. And here's my soapbox message. There's some 330,000 financial advisors. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you're seeing me put up my air quotes. If you're listening to this on the podcast, maybe it's on iTunes or Stitcher, Spotify, whatever, then you just missed the air quotes. But I put up air quotes under the terms financial advisor. I got to tell you, I don't like that term. If you think about it, financial advisor means you should advise on finances. But friends, that's not what happens. In fact, unless you're working with a registered investment advisor, You're not working with somebody who has a fiduciary obligation to do what's right and in your best interest. So many people call themselves financial advisors now that are really just glorified salespeople. Whether it's they're selling a stock or they're selling a mutual fund or they're selling an ETF, they're generating a commission, they're doing it so that they can make revenue. And there's nothing wrong with that. But here's where my gripe is. My gripe's not even in that in the position that all they're doing is selling a security. My gripe is if you're a financial, quote, advisor, then you should advise on all finances, not just the things which make you money. See, people want to go out and they want to sell stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, because they can make a profit off of it. Heaven forbid you buy one of those crazy annuities that we talked about last time. Just no, no, stay away. And we're going to spend some time talking about them a little bit this time and why I don't like them. But so many people want to sell something. How many people do you actually know will sit down with you and tell you how to buy a refrigerator or how to finance a vehicle or how do you get out of debt? Do you know many people that come to you and say, here's how you can reduce your taxes to some good tax planning and work with your CPA? Or better yet, how do you increase the value of your net worth? See, that's the world financial advisor that I think. But the industry has abused it so much so here recently, a couple of states have actually tried to take exception to the term financial advisor, and they will only allow you to use the term. Or it looks like there's some rules coming into play that individuals will only be able to use the term financial advisor if they are acting as a fiduciary. I think the state of Massachusetts is trying to put that one through as we speak right now. I've got a friend up there who is a financial advisor, a true financial advisor, who's paid a fee for his advice to consult on business on personal lives. So he was telling me about that. I was like, man, thank God it's coming. What's interesting is out of the 330 some odd thousand, quote, financial advisors, there's only about 10 percent, only about 30,000 or so that work in a registered investment advisor. Heritage Investors, as you know, is a registered investment advisor. And by the way, just because the entity is registered doesn't mean they've received any type of status or merit or approval. That's not the idea. They're just registered with the state and either FINRA or the SEC oversees them and makes sure that they're following the fiduciary standard. That's the goal. So now that I'm off of my financial advisor soapbox, I want to overlay today for you the basic investments as I see it. And we're going to stay really, really, really high level today. And I only want to cover four particular investments. 
You may say, Justin, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. No, not hardly. <laughs> what we're going to cover today is what's called qualified, non-qualified, real estate, and business. See, as I see it, for business owners, there truly is only four investments. That's the way I view it. Or maybe I should say four investment positions. There's multiple different investments you can purchase. Obviously, with real estate, you could buy, you could buy raw land, you could buy single family dwelling, multifamily dwelling, condo units. I mean, it's pretty much ad nauseum. But there's, to me, four basic categories. So let's dissect these so I can lay the foundation. And man, in the next upcoming episodes, we're going to jump deep into investments for business owners. You're listening to the Financially Simple Podcast. Show your support by subscribing to this and our other educational business channels at FinanciallySimple.com. So for the overview today, let's deal with the one that is most misunderstood by business owners, and that is the qualified account, the qualified account. Qualification or qualified is basically a definition that is denoting a particular use. So if an account is qualified, that means there's a special treatment on that account. Most oftentimes, we'll say a qualified account being an IRA, an individual retirement account, or a Roth IRA, a individual retirement account that has Roth status. Also in the qualified, you could put 401ks, SEPs, which is a self-employed pension, simplified employed pension, actually, simple. There's a number of qualified plans. Why are they qualified? Well, it's pretty easy. There's a benefit for using the accounts, a benefit. Well, what's the benefit? Well, if you use an IRA, you get a tax deduction in most cases, and the money grows tax deferred. And when you take it out, you have a lot larger account because the money was never taxed. In a Roth IRA, you place the money in there after tax and it grows tax free. So forever you have some tax free dollars that you can get to, or until the Congress changes their mind on that sometime in the next millennia. So nonetheless, a qualified account means there's a qualification that adds a benefit. Now, I don't know if I necessarily disagree with this, I should say, but many people will say that an HSA or health savings account or HRA, a health reimbursement account, those could be qualified. In other words, you place money into an HSA, you get a tax deduction for it, and if you utilize it properly according to the rules set forth by the Internal Revenue Code, then you could take the money out tax-free. Thus, you have a qualified usage. Okay, if we're loosely using qualification in that sense, then we could also say that a 529 and ESA or Coverdell account are all types of qualified accounts. In other words, a 529 plan is probably the most popular college savings account. You put money into this account. In some states, you get a tax deduction for that deposit. But then when you take the money out, as long as it's used for qualified purposes, hence that term qualified, then you can take the money out tax-free. Now, I'm not going to argue whether or not it's technically qualified or not. I've seen many technicians even argue about that. But For the terms of some sort of a qualification, therefore the benefit by utilizing it, then we could argue that retirement accounts, we could argue that health accounts like health savings accounts, and particular college accounts could be qualified in nature. Well, Justin, why does it matter? I was with a client here yesterday in the office, a business owner who when we met, they were producing just over seven figures in total revenue. They've doubled it in three years. The net profits are unbelievable. In fact, so much so, we were working with their tax attorney and their CPA, and last year they were going to pay over $700,000 in taxes. Yeah, let that sink in for a second. How would you like to be that much more profitable and you're going to pay $700,000 in taxes? That's crazy. Well, because of tax planning and utilization of qualified accounts, in particular a cash balance plan coupled with a 401k in their case, we were able to drastically reduce the tax bill. The CPA and the tax attorney came up with some great ideas. We worked together as a team to implement those ideas. And ultimately, this individual was able to place about $500,000 into various accounts, various strategies, and they drastically reduced their tax bill, drastically reduce their tax bill. So much so that if they put a half a million dollars into the proper accounts, they could almost get a 50% reduction in the taxation. That's kind of crazy if you really think about it. What other account do you know? Could you go out and buy real estate and put a half a million dollars and then save $350,000 in taxes? 
Probably not. Not many cases. Could you use a stock or a bond or a mutual fund and go out and buy or spend money on these things and generate that level of tax savings? No, not typically. In fact, I would say probably not ever, but I don't know all the scenarios that you could run. So a qualified account is an applicable account for us business owners, but it has to be used properly. We were doing some tax planning for a new client this last year, and they had, an, I'm going to say, a novice CPA who recommended that they fund an IRA with some money. Their tax bill was going to be $6,000, and they recommended that we put $20,000 into a SEP IRA, and they would reduce their tax bill from $6,000 down to, I think it was roughly $3,100, because the way self-employment tax and all that stuff works. It just didn't make sense to us that this business owner should place back 20 something thousand dollars for only like a two or $3,000 benefit. Sure, it's a 10% ROI on the money going into the account, but by not doing what the advisor recommended, we were able to utilize the money, and now the business is up almost 30%, thus creating even more net worth. So if you're going to use qualified accounts, you have to use them properly, sparingly. Right now, we're in a very low tax bracket. Many would argue that certain qualified accounts shouldn't be used at all. In fact, I was listening to an attorney speak pretty much broad stroke saying that, well, I recommend that no one uses a IRA or a 401k. You should only place your money into Roths. Now, the advisor who was interviewing this individual, they basically asked them, well, what about in this circumstance and this circumstance? And just like with most broad brush strokes, you're not going to be able to defend it. And this attorney had to backpedal. So there are times right now, for example, you may want to use a Roth IRA and not use tax qualified or pre-tax monies. We're going to talk about those in the next coming episodes, but I want to introduce you to this concept of qualified money. And then I want to shift you to the next topic of non-qualified money. Well, what is a non-qualified account or what is non-qualified monies? Well, it's easy. It's the opposite of qualified. In other words, the dollars and cents are placed somewhere that you can utilize without any rules or restrictions. Probably the most common account that most of us have is a checking account or a savings account. Those are typically non-qualified. In other words, they may be in your name or yours and your significant other's name or their business name. They're still an account. They're just not getting any special tax treatment. In fact, they're probably getting taxed on the interest and dividends that you're making off the accounts. So we understand that non-qualified is the opposite of qualified. In other words, it's not going into a particular account governed by the IRS. But did you realize there are other assets that we can buy? One of my favorite things that I've seen clients buy is I've seen them buy guitar collections. I love to talk about one of my clients who has a guitar collection worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's appreciating in value. I mean, a couple of years ago, he could sell it less than it is today. I have clients who have car collections. That's a non-qualified investment. Car collections, antique cars. I have no people who have tons and tons and tons of guns, guns and ammo even. We're going to talk about those type of investments. I've seen people buy gold. Precious metals, coins, cryptocurrency could be considered non-qualified. It could be an alternative style investment. You can think about marijuana right now, marijuana stocks. Everybody saw the rave. In fact, I read an article this morning in the Wall Street Journal where it says that the CEO of a major company that everybody's raving about said, hey, look, don't expect profits from our company for three to five years. That could be an investment. So we're going to talk about qualified versus non-qualified investments. My favorite, though, investments are business and real estate. Well, we spent a whole first season talking about how to grow the value of your business. We're going to hit that just very superficial and kind of point you back to some of the episodes we've done in the past. So today I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but we are going to talk a little bit today about real estate. I own real estate. I have house and I have lots of farmland, lots of land, many tracks. In my past, I've owned rental houses. I've built spec houses. I've bought houses and fixed them up. I've sold houses. I've owned personal residence. I've owned own land. I've sold minerals. If you can think about it in real estate, I've just about done it with the exception of timeshares. Just never really participated in timeshares. I've had mobile homes, etc. I also work with business owners who had the litany of real estate. They have a litany of it. I have one investor right now who's selling all of their investments in real estate. I have another investor right now, another client who's buying as much as they can in real estate, different times of life for these individuals. So we're going to talk about real estate. We're going to lay the proper way to buy real estate. We're going to have a couple of experts who've made millions come onto the show and talk about real estate. I love real estate, but it has its place and it has its limitations. And the Hollywood 
style real estate investing is often detrimental to us business owners. Really is. So we're going to spend some time talking about real estate. I hope that gets your creative juices flowing on this world of investments. We're going to talk about a lot of different venues, but here's what I'd like for you to do. I'd like for you to do two things for me. If there's a particular investment that you want me to cover, now I'm not going to get into analyzing specific companies, but a particular style investment. If you say, hey, Justin, I'd really like for you to talk about cryptocurrency. What in the world is it? What is blockchaining? Well, we'll talk about that. By the way, I own a little bit of cryptocurrency, full disclosure. I own a little bit. Do I have a lot? Nope, but I own some. We're going to talk about that. So if there's anything in particular you want me to cover, do me a favor and tweet me at Justin Goodbread, or maybe you want to send us an email at info at financiallysimple.com. If you have a particular guest that you would like, please let me know of a particular guest who's really knowledgeable in these areas. I would love to interview them and just see their take on it. So that's for my request number one. My request number two is this. We are starting to get some reviews on Apple and on Spotify and Stitcher. Do me a favor. Whatever you're listening to us on, pause it right now. Or when I get done talking, when I shut up, leave us a review. If it's a good review, great. If it's a bad review, tell me how I can get better. We're trying so hard here to give you as much information as possible. And as you can tell, there's a lot of work that goes into this. I work 60, 70 hours a week with clients, much less spending time to build this out. So let me know how I can get better at this. I want to add extreme value for you. Look, I say it every week. Life is hard. It is. Life is good, man. Investments, they are sexy. People love to talk about them. Money doesn't have to be frustrating, friends. It doesn't have to be hard. Investments don't have to be hard. Let's continue to make our lives at least financially simple. Hey, y'all go out and make it a great day. You've been listening to the Financially Simple Podcast. For more business and personal financial help and information, head over to FinanciallySimple.com today. 